Good afternoon. Now, when I was thinking about doing this assembly, I was wondering what sort of day was Thursday the 20th of May? The 20th of May is World Bee Day. That's a day that exists to educate people about the importance of bees and how they can help preserve them for the sake of the future. Beekeeping has become a vital necessity in the world's ecosystems and economic systems. However, not many people realize the importance of bees or know how to help save the bees. So that's why the United Nations started this day. Now, bees are under continuous threat from a human activity. It includes the introduction of invasive insects, pesticides, and land use change. Now, bees pollinate 90% of the world's wild flowers. 35% of the world's crops depend upon bees for their growth. They help build ecosystems all over the world. Now, the United Nations created this day to raise this awareness that we must protect the bee. Now, bees and other creatures also help us fight problems on a global level, like world hunger and helping to adapt to climate change. These fantastic fuzzy creatures help keep our plants and our planet alive. If you look at bees as creatures, they're a fascinating insect, even without all the services they provide for us. So, for instance, the phrase bees' knees makes absolutely no sense at all. Bees don't have knees. Bees also communicate by dancing. Now, can you imagine if humans didn't talk and only commun communicated by the medium of dance? If you consider honey as well, it's also been used as an antiseptic treatment for burns and for, for wounds over the centuries. Bees have also been around for thousands of years. In fact, the very first bee was, was found to be um, 100 million years old. Bees might also have been the first species to decide to go vegetarian. Now, originally, our fuzzy friends used to eat other insects, but they evolved to eat nectar and pollen instead. Bees have long supported us with their honey, from sweetening food to dressing wounds. We loved honey so much that our children are still named after bees. Names like Melissa and Ali mean bee in Greek and Urdu showing that across the world, we share a global appreciation for the animal. Now, surely I cannot continue for the rest of the assembly just telling you about bees. Well, I can, so here's some more facts. Bees are crucial to our economy. Think about that breakfast you had this morning, the jam on your toast all came about because of bees and their pollination. Our healthy environment, our plants, our gardens, our trees are all bee-friendly spaces. Now, different bees have different personalities. Honeybees and bumblebees are the social ones. Now, there are several lost bee species. We've lost 13 species since 1900, and that's all down to our activity, our human intervention, and the pesticides and pollution. Now, without bees, we are in trouble. Our economy will suffer. Without them, it would cost UK farmers 1.8 billion pounds every year to pollinate our crops. Albert Einstein, the famous physicist, said, if the bee disappeared off the face of the globe, then man would have only four years of life left. No more bees, no more pollination, no more plants, no more animals, no more humans. Now, bees clearly live in hives. Perhaps you've seen these hives around the countryside. Now let's just think about how they live in those hives. There's about 40,000 bees in the hive. There's one queen bee. There's thousands of female worker bees. In the summer, hundreds of male drones whose role is to mate with the queen arrive. Within the hive are square and wooden frames where the bees build up the honeycomb to form cells which hold the developing baby bees honey or pollen. To make one kilogram of honey, Honeybees fly over 110,000 miles. That's more than four times around the world and travel to over four million flowers. So what you say? So what? Well, it got me thinking. It got me thinking about how this is an analogy for our lives and how we live our life at home with our families. And then when we come to school as well as in our leisure time, I want you to think about the groups and the teams that you belong to as you move through your daily life as you come to school and as you return home again in the evening. Just think about these pictures here. There we have, there's our hive, hopefully you can see it. 
It's an aerial view of Caldy Grange Grammar School. That's our hive, that's where we belong, that's where we live. And below it, some examples from our prospectus of how you gather as groups, as pairs, as friends, eating your lunch in the canteen, in a choir, or in a sports team. <clears throat> now, let's think about the organisation of the Beehive. It has a structure that is clear and understood by all its members. The bees live together over a long period of time. The bees live close together and work together well. Bees have clear and meaningful work, producing eggs, caring for larvae, and maintain the hive in good order. It may take time for our teams to work well together. Your form or your classes or your sports team, for example. But we need clear aims and visions, just like the bees. <coughs> Excuse me. We need to work closely together to share and discuss ideas and solutions with all members contributing. We need to develop and grow so we can take on more demanding work and challenging work. We need to be flexible, making life more exciting and interesting. Now, the membership of the hive. In the hive, there are three types of bees, each with different functions. Each type is adapted for its particular job. The different individuals are accepted and appreciated. Each group in the hive is qualified and experienced and therefore has something to offer the team. We too benefit from belonging to groups. We learn and gain more from our membership of groups. Teams are made up of individuals. It's their different values, their skills and experiences that help the team to work and work well. Effective teams need a mix of people able to work together. The expectations are very clear in the hive. The drones are expected to fertilize the queen. The queen is expected to lay eggs and the workers are expected to maintain the hive. Teams will not progress if expectations are not clear. Members must understand and be clear about their role and what is expected from them to reduce the risk of conflict and misunderstanding. So just like us in our family or our school group or our team, there's a clear division of labour in the hive, but no bee is forced to work. They do it willingly. The workers ensure that the hive has all the practical resources it needs to perform well. They change their duties as their age increases. In the hive, there's a high degree of support, just like school, amongst the team members. Workers feed the larvae. The larvae are the weakest members of the hive. We, like bees, need to support one another particularly new members too, who may need a lot of support. So belonging to a team may call for sacrifices from the members of the group to achieve the aims of the team together. Now, when they come back from their food expedition successfully, the workers perform dances and they call for a meeting to give feedback on the success of their trip. So our teams will not be successful without effective communication. Communication builds trust. Team members need to listen to each other. Successful teams are fun. Dancing is a sign of celebration, happiness and fun. We get a lot of satisfaction by being part of the team and may open, openly express excitement, enthusiasm and enjoyment while carrying out their roles and tasks. For us, frequent and regular meetings or gatherings play a critical role in the success of our teams. Now, in conclusion, effective teams get the job done. Now, I hope that uh, I've helped you think a little bit about your role and your contribution to the hive that you belong to, whether it be your family, your friends, your sports teams, your clubs, or your maths class. And I'd like to leave you with a final thought. Anyone who thinks they're too small to make a difference has never met the honeybee. Thank you, have a good day.